Armando has to do again, biology and medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando has to do again, here you can also like, please ask questions, answer some questions, and post some interesting things including artworks, or you can send them to me, and you can also change the quality settings to the highest graphics for better, yeah, better graphics. Um, in the last video, we looked at um, the formation of a plasma cell from an immature B cell. And then we learned that the plasma cells with the CD4 T cells and the CD8 T cells, the T helper and the T killer, they will want to leave the lymph node to initiate to to initiate and promote the immune response. And this is uh, and these cells make up the adaptive immune response, the the B the B cells and the T cells. And so they leave the lymph node through the efferent lymph vessel and they circulate around the body through the lymphatic circulation. Some cells migrate to the infected tissue to where the pathogen invasion occurred or where it, where it has caused damage. So in this case, for example, we have the T helper and the T killer cell migrating to this infected site. Now what would they do? For starters, a T helper 1 cell will promote tissue macrophage engulfication of a pathogen uh, by secreting interferon gamma. Let's have a closer look at the T helper 1 uh, cell and look at its functions and what it secretes and how it promotes the immune response. So T helper 1 secretes interferon um, gamma and this activates macrophages to destroy pathogen. T helper 1 also secretes uh, TNF alpha which stimulates diapodesis of leukocytes so that the leukocytes can enter the injured or damaged tissues or infected tissues much more easily. T helper 1 also secretes interleukin 3 and GM, GM uh, CST, uh, which stimulates macrophage differentiation in the bone marrow. So, so it allows bone marrow to produce more macrophages, so, or monocytes in this case. T helper 1 also secretes um, a chemokine CXCL2, which is a chemotaxis uh, attractant. So this uh, chemoattractant will attract more leukocytes into the area, if you know what I mean. Now the T killer cells. Their role, as I mentioned earlier, is similar like natural killer cells. They essentially kill infected cells. So in this case, the macrophage is infected, and so the T killer cell will kill it. The plasma cells, and also in the lymphatic circulation, are long-lived plasma cells, and so they will continue on to the bone marrow through the lymphatic circulation. In the bone marrow, they will secrete their antibodies, and the antibodies secreted, secreted by these plasma cells will promote the immune response, the adaptive immune response. And so this plasma cell will secrete antibodies. The antibodies will travel via the lymphatic circulation and or the blood circulation. These antibodies can also encounter pathogens along the way and help destroy it. Um, these antibodies will travel to the site of invasion usually and circulate around to stop the pathogens uh, from, encounter from traveling to other destinations. So here we have the antibodies and the antibodies will bind onto the pathogens, let's just say, and it will promote phagocytosis as well as many other things. In this video, we mainly looked at the adaptive immune response uh, with the T cells and the B cells traveling to the site of infiltration to promote the immune response. Now let's just take a step back and look at the innate immune response because there is an important um, group of proteins known as inflammatory mediators and these inflammatory mediators they also promote the immune response as well as uh, many other things pain response as well so um, these inflammatory mediators are part of the innate immunity and also part of the adaptive immunity to an extent so in this in uh, in, in this final uh, part of this video we're just going to look at some of the inflammatory mediators so here I wrote in here I wrote arachidonic metabolites. This is a mistake. This should say um, inflammatory mediators. And there are two types of inflammatory mediators. There are pla uh, plasma protein derived mediators, and there are also cell derived mediators. A good example of a plasma protein derived inflammatory mediator is a is a complement proteins which we have already learned a bit about. Now these are plasma protein derived because 
they travel through the plasma and go into the site of infection, infiltration, etc., to promote the immune response. And we won't really talk about the plasma protein derived, we'll mainly concentrate on the cell derived, which means that these inflammatory mediators come from cells specifically, right? So cell derived um, inflammatory mediators, we have serotonin and histamine, which are good examples. Serotonin and histamine, um, as we might know, causes vasodilation and increases vascular permeability. And serotonin and histamine are typically secreted by platelets for serotonin and histamine by mast cells. And as we know, the, this is important for the immune response. Now, cell-derived and uh, cell-derived inflammatory mediators, another important group are what's called the arachidonic acid metabolites. And this and this group is very important. And there are many types of arachidonic acid metabolites, but there are uh, three main uh, groups, you can say. We have prostaglandins, which are usually secreted by macrophages and mast cells, and they cause vasodilation and also increase increases vascular permeability. We also have leukotrienes, which causes vasoconstriction, but increases vascular permeability. And then we have lipoxins, which are secreted by um, neutrophils uh, through the activation of platelets. And lipoxins actually are inhibitors of inflammation. Uh, important thing to know. And it also inhibits a neutrophil adhesion or on epithelial cells and also chemotaxis, which basically inhibits inflammation. So that was it for the inflammatory mediators. That's just important to know because uh, these inflammatory mediators are important in hypersensitivity response, uh, hypersensitivity response, which we'll learn about uh, later on in this immunology map. So this concludes the overall picture of the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system. Um, so that was just like an overall uh, image of how the immune system works. In the next series, well, which continues on from this, we will look at the mucosal immunity, which are part of the lungs and our gastrointestinal tract. And also we look at the hypersensitivity reactions, like one, two, three, four. And also, if I can remember, mm, and something else. Uh, so stay tuned. Please uh, subscribe, share, and like. Thank you very much.